Okay, so um, yes, I just presented on this slide, so I will continue on. And I wanted to start with our acknowledgements. Um, this pr project was a huge team effort all the way from the president of the university, including faculty, staff, and students. I also wanted to acknowledge the many de departments and units of the University of Miami, including CIFAR, Center for AIDS Research, which is also part of the University of Miami, while Cornell Medicine and also Medisub. Our sample um, analysis plan was designed to split the sample into three splits. One was sent to Center for AIDS Research, where it was analyzed by Dr. Mark Sharkey using a new innovative technology called Volcano Second Generation PCR. That was our backbone for our rapid response. We were able to turn around samples within 12 hours. We also sent samples to the Oncogenomic Shared Resource where they were analyzed by RTQPCR for comparative purposes. Also at the Oncogenomic Shared Resource, we had the samples analyzed for um, variants using a, a deep targeted sequencing approach. Samples were also sent to Wild Cornell Medicine where they were analyzed by metatranscriptomics using RNA-seq and all the bioinformatics were done through Wall Cornell Medicine. All of our sample collection plans were mapped to human surveillance programs. Um, at the University of Miami, we had an extensive testing, tracking, and tracing program of our students and faculty and staff. We also at the University Hospital had access to electronic medical records. We also had access to zip code level data through the Florida Department of Health, and through Miami-Dade County Public Schools, we had information on absenteeism. When it came to the pandemic, the most extreme as aspect of the pandemic were the lockdowns, which were motivated by the hospitals getting overwhelmed. We know that from the wastewater, we the hospitalizations can be predicted from the wastewater. Here we have a black line corresponding to the hospitalizations, the green corresponding to the wastewater numbers. What we found throughout the pandemic is that early during the pandemic, a small amount in the wastewater represented a lot of hospitalizations. But as we were going through the various phases of the pandemic, the slope flattened so that now we're still seeing it in the wastewater, but it's not resulting in as many hospitalizations. So flattening of the slope. In terms of the variants, um, on the right, we see the colors showing the different variants in both the clinical samples and the wastewater samples. They were both tracking each other. So from the wastewater, we can also see the variants. On the left-hand side, we see the relative timing of the variants observed in the wastewater versus the clinical samples. And we see that for the Delta variant, for example, we saw it in the wastewater one week or seven days prior to seeing it in the clinical samples. In terms of the hospital data, uh, we also were able to evaluate comorbidities, and we were able to observe correlations between the hospital wastewater SARS-CoV-2 numbers and the number of patients, and also early during the pandemic with remdesivir administration. Also from the hospital wastewater, we were able to observe monkeypox, the virus in the wastewater, and we were able to compare that to the number of patients in the hospital, and it coincided in time. Similarly, for candida auris, a fungal pathogen, we were able to correlate the presence of candida auris in the wastewater with the presence of candida auris patients in the hospital. Now, for candida auris, not only were we able to see this fungal pathogen molecularly, we were also able to culture it as well. So our next steps are really focusing on additional targets. Uh, we've teamed up with um, another group at Yale University. We've downloaded data from Wastewater Scan, from BioBot. All of these different laboratories are analyzing for SARS-CoV-2. Just to give an update as to where they all stand, um, this is positivity or positive cases um, in Miami-Dade County. And you can see that the number of cases are decreasing over time because of people are not going to get tested. But if we divide by the number of tests, so the percentage that are positive amongst those who are tested, we're still seeing significant positivity. Um, and it's remaining pretty consistent over time. And if we compare that to the wastewater from all the different labs. Again, we see the correlation with the Delta wave during the Omicron wave between the wastewater and the positivity, and also during the post-Omicron waves. And we're seeing consistency across all the different labs. 
In addition, from the shotgun sequencing, as you can see on the green to the right, um, what's fascinating about the sequencing is now we can see abundances of pathogens directly. In the past, um, typically you couldn't get to the pathogen level, but the green shows the bacterial pathogens that are being observed in the wastewater from sequencing. And then also from the RNA sequencing, we can even see viral pathogens, um, inclusive of norovirus and Aichi virus. In addition to that, we can see antimicrobial resistance genes um, we found that they were significantly higher, more diverse in the hospital wastewater compared to the wastewater treatment plant. And as you go downstream the, through the sewer system, we're seeing lower levels and less diversity. We've also teamed up with a group called um, Phase Genomics. And Phase Genomics has a very unique technology where they can provide host attribution to AMR genes. And so, for example, for the host of the bacterial host of Provitella, there's two antimicrobial genes that are shown by the blue stripes here. And those two AMR genes are found in the genomic um, structure of the bacteria. So our next steps are focusing on targets beyond SARS-CoV-2, and we're looking at air and surface sampling as well as wastewater. We're very excited about the sequencing and the target agnostic analysis provided by sequencing. The big challenge is how do we interpret all of this information that we're getting from wastewater, um, getting the clinical data to match up to the wastewater so we can we know what it all means um, is uh, one of the challenges in, in putting this information together. And then of course, data assimilation, trying to put the wastewater data with the human health data automatically so that reports can be generated in a faster fashion. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you. Uh, my email is here if you have any questions and we have our publications um, shown here as well. Thank you.